Hello, it's Prudence in the Drunken Kitchen back with you after a long reprieve. I um, had said my next video was going to be risotto, but I don't have risotto tonight. I do have some rice for my recipe, but it's weirdly a Prudence thing. A Prudence with a large family thing that I'm <laughs> reusing rice in a different way. But I'm going to be making burgers. Burgers. And so I have done some of my mise en place ahead of time. I have burgers and I wanted to put sauteed onions in them. So I already sauteed the onions with garlic in olive oil. And this is one of my favorite olive oils. Um, it's unfiltered olive oil and, and it has like a great flavor, great body if you're trying to use olive oil. And so it's one of my favorites. And um, I sauteed my onions and garlic in it and I put it in my raw meat. It's going to be burgers. It's grass fed beef. And I don't have the packages because I decided to do this at the last minute. Prudence in the drunken kitchen. Those are Boda Box, not Black Box because I can't get Black Box all the time. It This like weird covid situation has post the snow apocalypse made certain foods really hard to find it's like I, I was at the grocery store the other day and the aisle of um let me think about it one aisle was like completely bare and i was like why is this stuff bare it's not even survival items but it was gone and so i can't get black box all the time but i can get boda box so, in the drunken kitchen, Prudence is always there, but I did get some really nice grass-fed beef. And so here it is. I had already, I did my mise en place. I already made the patties. And the interesting thing is that I made these patties with some leftover risotto. So there is risotto in this film risotto rice this is some risotto rice that i had made a few days ago but i put this risotto rice in those patties along with those sauteed onions and garlic in that beautiful olive oil and i also crunched up and put in those patties some nacho <laughs> nacho flavored um, taco shells so I crunched them up and stuck them in here with my um, grass-fed beef to give my um, beef patties my burger patties some flavor and I added this Adams Reserve it says just right burger spice and I'm going to fry my beef. I have a whole lot of pans heating. I'm gonna show you. This is my leftover risotto rice, but I have a whole lot of pans heating. I'm gonna cook my patties over here, and I'm gonna saute mushrooms over here, but over here, I think I'm gonna make some cheddar cheese crisps where you just put the cheese on the heat and it melts down into a nice little crunchy item and make them round and they'll be toppers like cheese toppers instead of cheese slices it'll be cheese crisps with these nacho cheese crunchies inside the burgers in the burgers with the sauteed mushrooms <laughs> And yes, I'm just always thinking outside of the box. How am I going to feed my family with food and put the leftovers in my food? <laughs> Anyhow, Prudence in the Drunken Kitchen. My latest video are grass-fed beef with leftovers. <laughs> Hello, this is Prudence in the Drunken Kitchen making a very short film called Seasoning the Pan. <laughs> I am making burgers these wonderful burgers over here and I had all these pans 
that are on my stove all these pans and all these pans are primed and ready for food but I had to season the pan two of these are cast iron and the other one is non-stick but you still have to put something in there non-stick is non-stick is okay but I still season my pan and I season my pan with this this is leftover bacon grease and I know some people out there are anti-pork or anti-bacon but even if you don't eat the pork or the bacon the fat that you get left over from it is excellent for your pots and pans it can take a lot of heat a whole heck of a lot of heat and season your pans so then you get your pans beautifully beautifully you see they're black and shiny they're ready to go with food so this is seasoning the pan and I have a tendency I put olive oil on there but olive oil doesn't work that great olive oil doesn't take a very high temperature but bacon fat takes a really high temperature and I um, my family likes bacon and I cook bacon I don't often eat it but I like to cook with it a lot for the flavor and to collect the bacon fat to prime my pans having an excellent pan that's ready for your food is a key to cooking and so sometimes the only way to prime these pans is with what you would least expect you can use vegetable oil but I mean when they were on the chuck wagon years ago they couldn't wash their cast iron and they had to cook something on there that kept that pan primed so that they could always cook so some of the fattier foods were great proteins and great healthy fats and in a lot of diets today bacon and butter are good fats if you do keto bacon and butter are good fats but even in the science industry they've determined that bacon butter are okay fats if you do them in moderation and I use them to season my pan so it's not like I'm adding bacon to my foods I'm just putting it in the pan to keep the pan primed to cook the food really well um, but as far as you know healthy fats you can do your omegas and fish and other fats are really healthy for you avocados nuts are really good healthy fats to help you eliminate the bad fats or fight against the bad fats in your body so not all fat is bad that's a key thing but here this was seasoning the pans these are cast iron and one non-stick still the non-stick I still put the bacon fat in there just because it can take a lot of heat and when you need to sear a food and you need to have a fat that's can take a lot of heat you can do use peanut oil or you can use bacon fat and you're got to do searing you need something that can take a lot of heat and your plant fats can't do it well peanut oil it's a legume it's a plant yes but it can take a lot more heat than vegetable oil and olive oil but the animal fats can take way more heat than the other um, fats so there you go Oh, and Prudence in the Drunken Kitchen. It's a part to my video right now. Here's the next part. Cheese crisps. <laughs> Cheese crisps are a weird anomaly of cooking that probably were um, pieces of food that fell off of something else and somebody discovered, oh my gosh, you can make this into something. So I have some cheddar cheese down here cooking. Look, it's cooking and I'm going to flip it here soon and they're all melt. They're like the hot melty lava of dairy. <laughs> it's a cheese crisp. But you can cook them, crisp them up and make them into these little wonderful I don't know what you call them. They're like little wonderful packets of protein that you can put on your, oh, I'm not touching my hair, put on the burgers. So that's my plan today is to make these cheese crisps 
to be different so it's not just a cheese slice, it's a cheese crisp that's been cooked into this uniqueness of crunchiness for your burger. Because I already put, uh, I showed you before, that nacho tortilla crisp in the burger so it's going to be like a cheesy crunch and I wanted the cheese to be another cheesy crunch. So this is my plan for this weird um, homemade burger that I'm trying out. Cheese crisps. Oh, let me see if I can flip one before I sign off. Oh, it flipped just fine. Oh, dang. I didn't lie. I flipped them over. They stayed whole, and this is what they look like now. They look like little pancakes. But they're going to be cheese crisps for the burgers. And instead of a, you know, regular piece of cheese, it's going to be these little weird cheddar crisps. Okay, the burgers are cooking quite nicely. They're doing really well. Um, I have I uh, made a couple of cheddar cheese crisps. And now I got the the Mexi mix crisp going on, but the burgers are doing really well. So look, those are. Uh, I'm not sure. These were the cheddar cheese crisps. And they're nice and look, they're nice and. It's a piece of cheese, but it's like really crisped up. And I got some Mexi mix ones going on there. And the burgers are cooking really well over here. I flipped them over, and you can see the rice and the little pieces of, um, I'm not sure you can, but I can. The rice and the little pieces of tortilla crisps that are inside the burger patties. This is grass-fed beef cooking in, this is its own fat. I did not add anything to this pan. It was just seriously hot. I primed it with a little bit of bacon grease to just grease it so nothing sticks. But this is all the fat that's come off itself. The only meat come off the meat and it's frying it itself up nice. Cooking feverishly here for you guys in the drunken kitchen. It's going to be uh, burgers and Kaiser rolls. I got, oh, Kaiser buns. These are Kaiser rolls, and they're like mini buns, so they're going to be kind of like a little bit bigger than sliders, a little bit smaller than traditional burgers, so in between, like two-thirds, three-quarters, I don't know what you want to call it, but they are Kaiser rolls. I like Kaiser bread a lot. Um, I won't be eating the bread. I'll be just, I probably won't be eating anything I could. <laughs> it is not the healthiest food. Alive. Put it in the drunken kitchen. I try not, well, I cook for my family. That's all I should say. On this segment, oh, it's a little crooked. We're going to do sauteed mushrooms. It's a little still crooked. No, that's all right. Sauteed mushrooms. So in one of those pans that I primed with bacon fat, the one that's back here, look, I got a, the, the last burger cooking there and the cheese crisps are done. But this last pan back here is where I'm going to make the sauteed mushrooms. And so I primed it with bacon fat. And I've been like called out over life on my sauteed mushrooms because I have children who like the mushrooms sauteed in butter. So I didn't do butter. I put, I primed the pan with bacon fat. It's got barely any bacon fat in there. And I've sauteed mushrooms in olive oil <laughs> before. And the kids are like, we could tell it's olive oil because you know, they're like, mom, quit cooking with the wrong food. So I'm gonna put these mushrooms, they're baby Bellas, be baby Bellas in that pan. You may hear it. And it's weird because you think that they're just going to burn. But mushrooms have natural liquid contained in themselves. And as they cook and cook down, their like, liquid shows up in the pan. But if your pan's seriously hot, they will saute beautifully. 
and not just get like soupy weird. Grass-fed burgers. Prudence in the drunken kitchen. 